Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. If you do love a relationship story, why not consider hitting that subscribe, that like, maybe that notification bell too. And as always, let's jump straight in to today's first story. Now, this one has a couple of updates with it. It's from a typical ostrich who says, Husband, 30 male, cheated on me, 27 female, with my own sister, 21 female. I'm upset, confused, and angry. Forgive me if it's confusing in places. I'm still shaken and confused by the whole situation. So me and my partner have been together for six years, live together, and have a five-week-old daughter. Me and my sister have a very close relationship since my parents haven't always been the best or supportive figures in our lives. So we clung together and would even consider myself the mother and father figure in our life. Mine and my partner's relationship has been fairly strained since my daughter has been born. He would stay late at work, been dismissive when I would want to communicate our feelings and huff and puff when I would tend to our daughter. I had a fairly rough pregnancy and and quite a traumatic birth, so my libido and overall body confidence is scarce. I don't feel like being intimate most days and my partner would give me the silent treatment, but I never worried about him being unfaithful. I was feeding my daughter on the sofa tonight with my husband sitting next to me. We were both watching TV and his phone kept vibrating, but I had a feeling something wasn't right with the amount of notifications and how quickly he would answer. He got up to go to the bathroom and didn't take his phone with him this time. I grabbed it, put the passcode in and had a look who the messages were coming from. It was my sister. Before I looked at the messages, my heart dropped and my heart was in my mouth when I started looking at the messages. There was nudes, sexting, and conversations on how I'm not putting out like I used to, which was a knife in my chest. They had met about four times, in which I realized was the times where I was taking myself to the doctor for scans and checkups and getting shopping for my grandparents. I am beyond distraught. I have no idea what to do, where to go, and how to go about confronting them. I feel like my whole world has come crashing down. I have lost my husband and my sister. And we do have a couple of updates on this story and some comments as well from this initial post, which we'll cover in a second. But whenever we've covered like cheating posts and stuff like that and where potentially it could end in divorce, the first thing people always say is, you know, take your time, don't say anything initially and get your ducks in a row. I always get that saying wrong, so I may have got it wrong again. So like if you can get copies of the messages, whatever. And I was looking at it, your daughter's five weeks old. They had met four times in these five weeks or has it been going on before all this? But No Outlaw For Me says, send yourself copies of those messages and any replies that he may have sent and get yourself a lawyer or woman's aid advocate before you let him know what you found out. Things you said about him before you wrote about the text that you saw led me to believe that he was a jerk. You don't need to put up with a jerk like that in your life. You deserve better. A deleted user says, I second this. This is a double betrayal here. How could they both do this to you at a vulnerable time? It's despicable. Also, please find a therapist to help you here. Note, you did nothing wrong here. They both did. Prepare yourself to boot him out and go no contact with both of them. You have other friends and your child to think about here. Those two are both off their rockers and only if they both accept their responsibility in all this and get some serious mental help, their lives may be redeemable, but prepare that they will not and project all the blame on you. Please try to take care of yourself here by eating, drinking water and resting as much as you can with a newborn and this information. Another deleted user says, I'm sorry you're going through this. Welcome to the shittiest club to ever be a member of. As I have said often, and you kind of led to it when you called your marriage strained. So often we BS take life's changes in stride and over time let them become the new normal. Like the frog on the pot whose temperature rises slowly. Our wayward spouses find their outlet in starting new relationships elsewhere. Generally this starts with removing all communication from you and outletting it somewhere else. Work friends, old friends, new friends, etc. Eventually this turns into a relationship and their life is on the uptick. They have a new relationship fields and they have moved on from you. Then in some way the truth comes out and this all crashes down. On one hand, I'm jealous that you found out ahead of time. I got the your wife has been fucking my husband text to find out about D-Day number one. On the other hand, the fact that you are dealing with both your husband and your sister betraying you is a new low that I didn't have to experience. Here's what I can tell you not to do. Number one, do not okay the pick me dance and try to fight for your husband back from your sister. It only leaves you worse. When you lower yourself to that level, you will only feel worse in retrospect. 
you're a great wife, a great mother, and your husband is just a douchebag. And that's the real story. Not that you did something to deserve this. Two, do not try to take the leading role in anything you do if reconciliation is what you chose. He fucked up, not you. You will find that if you take the lead, he will regret getting caught, but never feel remorseful for what he did to you. Three, prioritize your time with your daughter. Get on the record, his aloofness, and then use that in court when you fight for full custody. And one more from Vaguely Aware who says, first, sorry you are here, your husband sounds awful. How can he expect sex? You're five weeks postpartum. You're not supposed to have any sort of penetrating intimacy for at least six to eight weeks. I want to make sure you know that isn't your fault in any way. This was an evil series of choices made by people you trusted. People who were supposed to be looking out for your mental, emotional, and physical well-being. I honestly don't see how divorce isn't a choice here, and I'm honestly pro-reconciliation if the wandering spouse is remorseful. But these two people... I don't think they can be a healthy part in you or your child's life after this. Please consider contacting a divorce lawyer. Find out what divorce would cost. Get an idea of what asset division, custody, child support, or alimony may look like. Contact a therapist if you have the means. You've experienced an emotional trauma. Let them help you get back to your feet. I'd especially encourage this given the absolute mindfuck of who the AP is. Make sure you're taking care of yourself and your baby. Eat as best as you can, stay hydrated, and sleep when you can. I know that's no easy task with a newborn. As messed up as this is, you're going to be okay. You didn't deserve this. We're here for you. So the first update. A lot has happened since I last posted. A lot came out. A lot has been said and now it's all on the table. I called an aunt of mine after I posted and saw some comments saying I should have a friend or family member by. I packed my baby bag, bottles and stuff for a short stay with my auntie who's been close by for the pregnancy and knows how to look after my baby because I don't want my child in the house whilst I talk about this. My husband who was confused and was asking why I was packing stuff for her and not me also. I told him he will see. I texted my sister come over right now and she pushed Y and called me but I just messaged her to get over here. Took her about 15 minutes to come and my aunt came and took my daughter in that time and my husband was getting increasingly worried. When my sister pulled up, my husband's ass fell out. The sudden look of realization hit him and he started crying. My sister came in and I told her to sit down and I did as you all asked. Took pictures of the chat, her number and all the contents that was on the chat. Pulled it up on the smart TV and told them both to tell me what the fuck had been going on. Admittedly, I did look quite insane, but I didn't care. She started crying. He started saying he was sorry over and over, and I explained that they had broken me. How I raised my sister and gave my husband a daughter, and this is how they repay me. They confessed it had been happening for at least seven months. He fucked her in our bed a couple of times, and they said it wasn't like they were in love with each other. Getting the lawyer in the morning, he's confessed to kissing a co-worker also. I'll be picking my daughter up in an hour and he's currently packing his shit whilst my sister is crying and begging me not to disown her. I'm ignoring it whilst I'm writing this. Really see I can only depend on myself in this time and divorce is an only option for me because I don't want my daughter thinking men can do this to her. He's begging me and they are both begging me but I'm not cracking. They made their bed, they can lie in it. Thank you everyone for your support and kindness. Edit. Also highly suspect grooming of my sister when she was 15. Leaving rooms together and having a great bond feels very stupid for missing that and putting my sister in danger. And we have an update too, which we're going to go into straight away. Hi guys, I want to first say how thankful I am for the people who were so supportive and even went out their way to message me. I really appreciate you all for that and it has given me a lot of strength. This is an update following on from my last post about what's happened in the week that followed. That night I was in shock and went into get away from me mode. I just wanted them out of my house and not in my vision. There was lots of trying to persuade me, apologizing, crying, and it was chaos. My partner left with things in a bag and presumably went to his mother's and he's yet to make a return. My sister was quite distraught and I felt like she was truly sorry, but it doesn't make what happened go away. She left not long after and I collected my daughter. It was a Christmas that didn't feel much like Christmas and spent it with my daughter alone. I cried a lot, ate a lot and decided to send my sister contact details for a therapist my therapist had recommended. I wanted to give her the space we both need right now, following on from the suspected grooming going on from when she was younger with my partner. 
just assumptions at this point, as her chance to open up about it if that was the case. As for my partner, he's not messaged me, asked about our daughter or anything that I would have expected like, I'm really sorry that this has happened or can I come collect XYZ. His mother has removed me from all social media and I haven't tried the number to see if she has blocked me. I honestly think he has up and ran and used his mother as a bunker. All the legal divorce stuff is underway and I'm currently focusing on myself and my daughter. It's deeply upsetting and it caught up to me a few days after, but I'm doing better now. Thank you all for the concern and support. I also have to use this experience to now help others here. And we have one more update as well, which again, we're going to go straight into. Hello again. Nice to finally be back. I took a good month off Reddit, sort of, and all social media in general, just to clear my head and a few things up. I didn't expect this story to blow up like it did and was pretty shocked about a YouTube video covering it too. Not expected, but glad I could maybe help some more people in a similar situation. Can I also just say I received 78 private messages from people with overwhelming amounts of support and advice since posting the first post, which seemed to have disappeared for everyone but me. Some people messaged me with that I was faking and deleted it out of guilt. Well, it's on my profile for me and I don't quite know why it's disappeared and I really wish I made it up to be honest. But anyway, moving on. Divorce is up and running and he has signed the papers but won't come back to the house or see his daughter. Sister is a no-show too and from unpopular demand, I've tried to bridge the gap slightly but with no avail. I'm just accepting he has literally up and ran and won't be back anytime soon. He's been messaging me with really worrying messages though. He asked if I was alone in the house at 3 a.m. one night. I said no because it just felt right to say that because it was really fucking strange to be woken up at that time then nothing. Hasn't asked about our daughter or even divorce proceedings. He just says, hey, now and again, but I'm keeping low contact for now. So not replying often and only to important things. Hasn't overtly attempted reconciliation. Not that I want to. He's just acting off. He messaged me. It's time now one day and then nothing for a few days followed up by hey again. There's messages that have been removed by him that I didn't see but they were usually at like 3 to 4 a.m. You know when you can feel someone's personality through text especially when you've known someone for a while. Can't really explain it but it's fucking weird and it's like he's a different person. My daughter and I are loving life right now and are thriving. Just want to know your thoughts on these random ass messages. Now, what a weird ass ending. And it sort of left me on edge at the very end of that about what's going on now. And I hope OP and daughter are absolutely fine, but it certainly sent a couple of shivers down my spine. Maybe I've read one too many no sleep stories, but you know, when people are texting a message at 3 a.m., it's either gonna be, you know, he's been drinking all night and feels completely guilty about it. So it's just sending messages that's incoherent and stuff like that. He's being purposely creepy like this for a reason or he's or he's having some mental issues right now that need to be resolved. And I'm not sure if Opie would be able to do anything with these messages. I, I'm thinking like along the lines of restraining order. I don't know if that's too much right now, but I would certainly feel worried about receiving something like that, especially if the person knew my address as well. But what is your thoughts on this story? What would you do if you was in OP situation? How would you handle it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from 8987600 who asks, is my 24 female mother, 56 female, overreacting about me wanting to spend Christmas as a newlywed with just my husband, 27 male, or am I in the wrong? I'm using a throwaway account since my main account is known by my family and friends. I got married in September of this year to my boyfriend of five years. We chose to elope. Legally, it was more of a blessing owing to the differences between marriage laws in our home country and this one. While on holiday in one of our favorite countries, we then returned home and had a ceremony where we signed all the official documents and legally became husband and wife. This was attended by our parents and siblings, so seven people in total. I promise this is all related to the overall issue. This wasn't at all a spur of the moment decision. We wanted a wedding exactly like this, something that everyone knew about and was seemingly on board with. For many years as I can remember, I wanted to spend my first Christmas as a married couple. With the proviso that I, we, had our own place. By this I mean the day itself, cooking together, potentially burning the meal together, napping in front of the TV when the Queen's speech is on. It's something I've always envisaged. I told my boyfriend about it years ago and he loved the idea as much as me. 
To clarify, this would just be the day itself, not the whole festive period. This was something that mine and my husband's family were made aware of, and both sides said they initially understood. We live around 80 miles away from my family and 170 miles from my husband's family. The initial plan was to see my boyfriend's family over this coming weekend and my parents on Boxing Day. As Christmas has come closer, it's become clear that my family, namely my mother, has become increasingly uncomfortable with the fact we're not going to be spending Christmas with either her or my husband's family. To give you an idea of past Christmases, for the first three years of our relationship, we spent Christmas apart, then spent Christmas with my family the year after, and last Christmas with my husband's family. My mother started by making comments that they're going to miss out on seeing me on Christmas for two years in a row, while my husband's parents are only missing out on a year. I pointed out that if we go visit my parents next Christmas, then his parents won't have seen him for two years and, and so they'll be even. But that it wasn't a competition in the slightest. To highlight family structures, Christmas with my family is with my parents, my brother and his girlfriend on alternate years. They are with them this year though, and my uncle, mother's brother, and his husband. My husband's family is his parents, his two brothers, and his mother's brother, so it's not as if either family is having a distinctly smaller Christmas if we are not attending. My mother has been asking if it's better just post our presents, and implying that we won't be making the trip down to them on Boxing Day. Again, I've shut her down about this. The reason I'm posting is that we rang my mother-in-law yesterday to confirm plans for visiting over the weekend. And she said that my mother had been in contact with her to ask if we are secretly spending Christmas with them and lying to the family about it. She told my mother that as far as she knew, we're sticking to our original plan of Christmas together and we definitely weren't going to them. It hurts that my mother thinks we're trying to get out of seeing them. My mother has recently been raising the point that since our wedding that she disagreed with our choice to elope and that spending Christmas alone is an extension of that. In the past few days, she has said that she thinks we're alienating ourselves from the rest of the world. I disagree. We love spending time with both of our families and our choice to elope was due to a combination of cost and overall need. We don't have thousands of pounds to spend on just one day so that random cousins, one or other of us, have never met can get loaded from an open bar. This was something that once again my mother said she completely understood. I just want to get the wider perspective to see what I'm doing is out of line. As a final note, I do browse the sub and, and usually whenever anyone posts about their parents, the advice is to go to specific subreddits and to call out parents abusive narcissists. I don't believe at all that my mother falls into that category. I believe that she is openly sharing her personal opinion and feelings with me and she is completely justified in doing that without being at all narcissistic. I just want to see if I'm the one in this situation who is acting in the wrong. Edit. Thank you for all the comments and messages I've received offering guidance. The first thing I'm planning on doing is talking to my mother to reaffirm why we want to and are doing this. Hopefully this will be a positive first start. Also I received messages criticizing my choice to elope and our reasons for deciding to do that. That's obviously not something we can change, so please don't send me something telling me I'm horrible daughter over it, because it won't get any kind of response. Now, we do have an update to this one as well. Now, I've been in one of these situations where I wanted to spend, you know, Christmas myself doing my own thing, but always felt the pressure of visiting, you know, a family member of some sort. I'm not criticizing the family member, but you get one side telling you, oh, you're coming to visit this year. And the other side, you're coming to visit this year. And in the end, you have to set your own boundaries and what you want to do. And like you said, it must hurt to think that your mother is thinking of you, that you're lying to her. So she's phoning the other side of the family saying, are they secretly coming to you this year? It, it doesn't sound like a very good way to be dealing with things to me. And whilst I can imagine you'd love to see your children at Christmas and stuff like that, but you'd also love for them to have their own lives and be doing their own thing and being happy in their own lives as well. And I think that's what's most important to me. But let's stroll on straight over to the update to find out how OP dealt with it. What did they do? Did they talk to mother? Did mother blow up about it? Who knows? Let's find out right now. So Christmas has been and gone. And there was a bit more drama than I wanted. After my original post, I contacted my mother to reaffirm two other reasons we wanted to spend Christmas Day itself on our own. And she said that she understood and said she looked forward to seeing us on Boxing Day. However, a few hours later, I got a call from my father asking why mother was crying and saying that I'd rung her up screaming and shouting about her interfering with our life. I said that nothing like that happened and that it hurt that she was accusing me of that when I was just trying to be mature about the situation. My father sympathized and said he'd try to talk to her about it. I checked in frequently in the days up to Christmas, but my mother read and ignored my messages. 
Whenever I spoke to my father, he said she was telling him I hadn't been in contact and she was waiting for me to apologize. But he had seen I was in a call and text history. He advised that visiting on Boxing Day might not be the best idea. But it got to the stage he would visit us alone since none of this was our doing. We had our own private Christmas day during which we found out that I was pregnant. We had started trying for our first child in secret a few months ago, but didn't suspect anything until I felt sick at the smell of turkey. We're going to keep this our little secret for the next few weeks, at least with everyone, my husband's family included. I text my mother to wish her happy Christmas in the morning and send another text in the evening asking if she still wanted us to go up to visit tomorrow. I got a one word reply, no. We took my mother at her word and didn't visit the following day. I think she was expecting me to grovel at her feet, begging for forgiveness, but that's not going to happen anymore. I called my father and told him that she had decided that we weren't visiting and it definitely wasn't on our end. He visited in the afternoon and brought the dog and we all went for a walk instead of worry about what my mother was doing or saying to other people about it. Apparently a horde of her friends have been told that I shredded her Christmas card and posted it back to them, among other things. But I'm done with worrying about what my mother says. I'm not at this stage going to completely cut her off or say she can't see her future grandchild, but our relationship is definitely strained. And I'm not saying it to be the case in this one, but we've covered a couple of stories recently, in fact, you know, where mothers or mother-in-laws, their behavior is completely switched and it ended up being much more than that person just being narcissistic or spiteful or anything like that. And there was a medical issue behind it. I'm not saying that's the case in this one, but it certainly did pop into my mind as I was reading through it, you know, to be telling people that, you know, she tore the card up and sent it back to them. After generally being completely, you know, fine about the situation before. Well, not completely fine, but, you know, not crazy level behavior. So I do wonder if that would be something to look out for. And imagine when when mum finds out about her being pregnant. Holy moly, I got a feeling we're not going to see the end of this one just yet. I think there could be future updates on that. But for now, I think OP dealt with it in the best way they can. The only way they can in some ways, you know. Dad is seeing the behavior is slightly strange as well and visiting them separate. And it was much like another story we covered just recently, sort of a fairly similar situation. But I'm going to turn this one to you guys and see what your thoughts are on the situation. As always, I would love to hear them if you have a moment in your day to share them. A huge thank you for spending 20 to 30 minutes with me today, getting involved in the channel, the likes, the subscribes, the memberships absolutely blow me away as always you're absolutely incredible never forget the change you make to people's lives and i will see you in the next one take care guys much love